If I were the devil. If I were the devil. If I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. The... So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed, and with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want it until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. What'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Wasn't that a fun intro? This took a while to put together, so thank you for being patient with me. But as I'm sure you know, there is a long-standing tradition in right-wing politics of simply accusing the left, the liberals, the Democrats of being satanic. This is from where the concept of the Democrat is derived. And I think what we're going to discover today is the further vindication of our old friend, the horseshoe theory of practical intelligence, which illustrates the unity between those of us who are below average intelligence, who are quick to berate the Democrats, the Democrats, accuse Barack Obama, Anthony Fauci of being the Antichrist, etc., and those of us who are of above average intelligence realizing the philosophical overlap between liberalism, leftism, Satanism, uh, um, and understanding the implications of that overlap as demonstrated in the intro. And then it's the two of our factions against those of average intelligence who would, who would say things like, hey, um, you did an anti-science. Sweetie, you must know that morality is subjective. Let people do things. There's no heckin' sky, daddy. Demons aren't real arena, kiddo, but science is. I freaking love science. These people are the worst people 
ever. And when we take the culture back, we're gonna make sure that everybody knows it. The default enemy in a video game or like a blockbuster film, it's not gonna be a Russian anymore. It's not gonna be a Nazi anymore. No, it's gonna be a Reddit user. We're gonna deep fake all the classics. We're gonna have Reddit users hunting for the Ark of the Covenant. Black Ops, 25th anniversary edition. Dimitri is gassed to death by Redditors. It's called accountability. It's called don't be an asshole. I'm excited for the future, but seriously, I'm not gonna tell you that you have to believe in demons or Satan or anything like that, even though my job is literally to promote my beliefs, but for some reason people want to draw the line of religion, that's fine. I'm just going to demonstrate to you that the overlap between Satanism and basically everything left wing is practically one to one. And so it therefore is not a coincidence that basically all of the evil that is plaguing our society is being pushed by the left or by people on the right who are really allied with the left. And this doesn't mean that if you're right wing, you're like inherently a good person or even that if you're left wing, you're inherently a bad person. Though you are operating within the coalition that is promoting that evil, and so you're really only going to be able to plead ignorance for so long, I think. But the point of all of this is just to show you that, no, it's probably not a coincidence that one of the biggest organizations that is spearheading the pushback against the Texas pro-life laws is the literal satanic temple, etc. So just bear with me, listen all the way through, at least hear me out, and then give it some thought after. And if you are relatively new to the channel, uh, you'll remember that we touched on this before in other videos. I think we covered it especially well, I will say, in how the 2000s. 2010s changed politics forever, um, in particular how all of the seven deadly sins are being promoted heavily by the left throughout society. So I would definitely recommend watching that after this. I'll put a link to it in the description, but this will be the first deep dive that we've done into this in particular. So I want to start with illustrating the differences between right-wing people and left-wing people. And there is a core difference. And then we're going to get into the philosophical overlap between liberalism and Satanism, as demonstrated by the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan, how this is related to drag queen story hour and abortion. So, so much to get to. But yeah, a lot of people have this approach of like, oh, both sides are the same. One, one side can't be correct about everything. I'm a centrist. I'm smarter than both sides. And we call those people gay. And then you've got Got other people who take this approach of, oh, well, right wing means small government, left wing means big government, which means that fascism and communism are the same thing, which is why they fought a brutal war against each other, and this makes sense to me. And it makes sense to him because he is a part of another group that we call retarded. So the point being, because obviously we're joking, we're busting your chops, it's all in good fun, but the point is that there is a core difference between the two philosophies, regardless of whether those who claim to represent them in government actually demonstrate that. And it is essentially the acceptance or rejection of higher hierarchy. It is equality versus hierarchy. It is idealism versus reality and or pragmatism. It is nurture versus nature. Think about that because those are the differences. Um, and I don't want to get too deep into this in this particular video, but I'll give you some examples here. So the right-wing individual acknowledges nature. He acknowledges that there are natural differences, that some things are objectively better than others, that some people are more skilled in certain areas and weaker in other areas, that no two people are exactly alike or equal, etc. He acknowledges that human nature is flawed, and because of this, he does not support these utopian ideas because they would never work, and of course, they've failed every time they've been tried. And because he acknowledges nature, he believes that it is better to live in accordance with it um, instead of trying to like challenge it. And because he acknowledges that man is flawed, he is skeptical of man and of human nature. This is why he takes his right to defend himself very seriously, etc. The left-wing individual is exactly opposite. Like the founders of liberalism, which is just proto-leftism because in a long enough timeline, liberalism will logically devolve into leftism because of the natural progressions of the conclusions upon which liberalism is based. Uh, see the United States of America. It is unavoidable. We touched on this more heavily in the last video that we did. But like the founder of liberalism, John Locke, the left-wing individual believes that all people are equal, not that they should just be treated equally, like literally they are equal, and that any differences between them are just a result of their environments. Maybe they grew up poor or oppressed, etc., and that we could achieve total equality with the elimination of those differences through an apparatus with enough power to do so, such as the state. He also believes that people are basically good and that because of this, everyone should just be free to do whatever they want, whatever makes them happy. And the only problems in the world are when people who must be driven by this like blind, irrational hatred, they come in and they say, sometimes people should not be allowed to do certain things. Or maybe that blind, irrational hatred leads them to oppress or discriminate against people. And this is why whenever something bad happens or whenever people are in bad circumstances, it can always be fixed by just giving them more money, giving them more access to opportunities, giving them housing, etc. And if someone points out that literally none of these things has ever fixed anything, well, then he will highlight that to suggest that is racist and he'll try to lose that person their job. And because everyone is the same and nature is nothing but a concept, the only things that bind us are all socially constructed. Therefore, if I want to be a woman, I can be a woman by simply declaring it because I'm a hyper-autonomous individual. If I want to abort my child, 
I can abort my child because it is inconvenient to my desires, which when stripped of all identity and everything else in order to achieve that status as the hyper-autonomous individual, that's all that remains to define me, desire. There's no such thing as culture, as country, morality, gender. It's all man-made. I am bound by none of it. It is all about me. I believe that human nature is basically good because I'm a narcissist who believes that they're a good person who can do no wrong. And that's why policies are judged by their intentions instead of their results because their results are mean. And that's basically what it boils down to. And you can prove this to yourself by running it, uh, like the simple thought experiments, and it works every time. You just take any point of disagreement between the left and the right, and 100% of the time, it can be traced back to the rejection versus the acknowledgement of nature, of hierarchy, and of reality. 100% of the time, that is the difference. Do we acknowledge what is objective, what is natural, and work to live in accordance with it, or do we reject it in favor of these subjective desires, like what we feel should be? That is the defining question between the two. Speaking of defining questions, I have a question for you before we continue. Do you want to be the guy that just gives out generic gift cards for Christmas? Of course you don't. And it's almost time to start thinking about the holiday season, and the first item on your list needs to be iTarget Pro. This revolutionary system allows you to dry fire practice with your actual firearm in the comfort, safety, and privacy of your own home. In other words, without old Joe sniffing over your shoulder. And the cost of ammo, it's through the roof, you know that. So this gives law-abiding gun owners a better way to train regularly. No more inconvenient trips to the range or expensive practice ammunition. Just download iTarget's proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and start your training experience. Dry fire training will help develop muscle memory, sharpen target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function, and more. iTarget Pro comes at all the major calibers, including 223 for your AR, so that you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. So go to iTargetPro.com right now, save 10%, plus get free shipping with the offer code DOYLE. This is the smartest way for you to practice, and it pays for itself literally in one day. That's the letter I targetpro.com, itargetpro.com, offer code Doyle, very epic. So before we get into specific examples, I want to give a very general explanation of why liberalism will unavoidably end with the widespread promotion of evil in a long enough timeline. It's unavoidable. It is inexorable. And the reason for this is very simply that man is flawed. Uh, the founding fathers understood this. If you're Christian, you understand this, that man is fallen. He is predisposed towards sin or more broadly speaking, evil. And contrary to what a lot of U.S. history textbooks will tell you, the founding fathers were largely very religious, specifically Christian. Like you can read their journals and their letters and see that this is basically the case. But what the founding fathers failed to predict when laying the foundations of our country, geniuses as they may have been, was the true necessity of proactive maintenance of the societal institutions, which they took for granted in order to have a safe free, moral, and prosperous nation. What I mean by that is the church, the community, the family. Those are all the things that comprise the backbone of the nation. If those are all strong, you can operate under that framework every day of the week and twice on Sunday, and everything will be fine. Like Everything's going to run like clockwork. But the problem is that when the ideas that facilitate that framework are exploited and traced to their logical conclusions, the social institutions upon which the stability of that society is dependent will eventually erode to roughly where they are now. So think about it this way. Man is flawed. If he is left totally free, if he is bound by nothing except his divine will, there will be evil. Every act of evil ever committed can be traced back to selfishness if analyzed correctly, the same way that a compass will always point north if it's working correctly. And this is why liberalism will always lead to evil, because it's set out to literally liberate the individual from all constraints to create this hyper-autonomous individual who is bound by nothing but himself, not by family, not by culture, not by religion, not by morality, because of course that's all subjective, not by country nor heritage, nothing. That was the whole point. And 200 some years later, you can see how these ideas have devolved into leftism. Well, I don't need to listen to biology. If I say I'm a woman, and then I'm a woman. I don't have to listen to your morality that says that murdering unborn children is wrong. It's my body, me. This is all me. Esoteric Far Cry 3 reference. But it's literally a breeding ground for narcissism and evil. And I don't even say that pejoratively. Like we are now living through the consequences of this experiment. Edmund Burke wrote this in Reflections on the Revolution in France, one of the founding conservative texts. He said that you cannot have freedom without order. And to a lot of us, this sounds weird because we've been taught to prioritize total freedom above all else, above God, above everything. The ultimate good and end is simply freedom. And I like freedom just as much as the next guy. So when I say this, it's not because I don't want people to be free. It's because I actually understand the conditions necessary to maintain that freedom in society because I'm blessed enough to be able to study the history of these things for a living. So thank you for that. But total freedom incentivizes man to pursue his own self-destruction through vice, and it encourages powerful people in society to further incentivize it by profiting from it and advertising it. Like there are people living in multi-million dollar homes right now who have built their fortunes by designing algorithms to get advertising revenue by exposing your children and addicting them to internet pornography. Is that freedom? 
freedom to become a slave to your desires, freedom to pursue your preferred method of self-destruction. They're telling you that slavery is freedom, just like freedom is slavery, like Orwell said. Think about that. They're telling you that to be a slave to your desires is to be free. And to be truly free and in control of your desires is to be a slave to things like morality, religion, etc. No, freedom is discipline. Freedom is order. And there is a difference. And this gets back to that key distinction. Is man basically good or is he flawed? Look at how this manifests in terms of how each side of the aisle regards the concept of rights. Conservatives tend to share the founding father's concept of rights, that rights are God-given, that they are negative rights. Also, on this note, the only reason you have rights in this country is because they are God-given, and God definitely did not want you to have a right to an abortion, or even if you don't subscribe to that line of thinking. The only reason you would have rights is as an acknowledgement of your value as a human being, which would acknowledge the value of all human beings, which would mean that you couldn't kill them when convenient to you. We're going to talk about abortion a little bit more later, a lot of it more later, but the negative view of rights is basically rights of omission, that we have the right to do things without others imposing themselves. I have a right to speak. You cannot prevent that. I have a right to own a firearm. You cannot prevent that. I have a right to live. You cannot prevent that, etc. You could literally stay inside all day while I exercise my rights and do nothing about it, and we would be square. That's how we regard rights, because we acknowledge that man is flawed. And because man is flawed, we need to make sure that we have our rights protected, because if not, he might try to shut my speech down, he might try to take my property, he might try to kill me, etc. The left has a diametrically opposite view of rights. They view rights to be positive rights. Positive rights are satanic. Here's why. A positive right is a right of commission. It's requiring others to take action. It's not that they should get out of the way so that you can do as you will, like a negative right. No, a positive right is a right of entitlement. It says, I have a right to health care. I have a right to housing. I have a right to food, etc. And we all know the Ben Shapiro explanations of why that is not economically viable. But the point being that the positive rights require direct action from others to be fulfilled even if at gunpoint, like we've seen throughout history, whereas the negative rights just require you to chill out, basically. So here we see the connection between these things, uh, the positive rights and leftism, and then uh, Satanism, and then the negative rights in Christianity and conservatism. And some people will say, oh, but John, no, negative rights are a liberal idea. Yeah, maybe in theory, but again, liberalism in a long enough timeline will inevitably devolve into leftism. I see where you're going with that. We're not quite there yet, yet. But liberalism, as we've been talking about, is fundamentally about the eternal and ultimate autonomy of the individual, which is just another way of describing selfishness, like the literal infatuation with the self. And on this note, really quickly, a very common straw man that I get in response to this when I say this is, well, John Doyle has a problem with the individual and he thinks it's selfish to want to be left alone. And it's like, no, obviously that's not the point. And maybe if you stop smoking so much marijuana and watching so much pornography, your brain would be able to process what I'm saying. Here's the best illustration of the difference. If you asked me or anybody who thinks like me, hey, do you have an obligation to help out your neighbor or your family member or whoever? We'd be like, yeah. And yet we still want to be left alone. No one wants to not be left alone. The difference is that it's always the people who go on about how they just want to be left alone above all else. These are the people who say, um, I'm not obligated to do anything unless I've entered into a contractual agreement with another individual. And if you disagree, uh, you're a status. And it's like, come on, man. Like if we ever get back to a point where we can just grill without having to worry about this stuff, which by the way, is only going to happen if me and all my cool friends continue to gain influence and power within American politics, then you're not going to be invited to the barbecue. Like we need all hands on deck. Being an American doesn't have to be reduced to this like legal abstraction. And if you're right wing, we need you really to just give a damn. Not everything has to be about this. Well, I never consented to having to give a damn. I'm just going to stay inside and play video games and get high and masturbate and eat chips all day. And it's like, it's just, it's so tiresome. Like we just don't have time for that. We will either hang together or we will hang separately. But that aside, this all doesn't mean that individual rights aren't important and that you shouldn't have them. But again, that is only possible if you have God in society, since God is what grants you those things. And God and Christianity are in the same league for what we're talking about here, uh, not liberalism. And we're doing a whole separate thing on just Christianity and conservatism after this video. But for right now, just know this. Liberalism, leftism, it's all about selfishness. Satanism, that whole philosophy, it's the same thing, which we'll get into more in a second. It's about the ultimate prioritization of the self. This is what Lucifer said to God. He said, non-servium, I will not serve. I will not subject myself to your authorities, your objective truth and good. I will prioritize myself over that. And from here, we can see uh, why the leftist view of rights is a positive view of rights, because they're selfish and narcissistic. They believe that they are entitled to things, that they have a right to things that could only be provided to them by the labor of others. That is satanic. The idea that you have rights to things simply because you are so self-important, that's pride. They try to disguise it as altruism or as compassion, but it's not about that. It's about pride. It's about what they want. They don't actually care about the community or the greater good. And when they pretend to, it's only because they want to siphon dopamine from virtue signaling. 
It's not about helping others. It's about viewing others as your servants because they view themselves as gods. This is why all these celebrities and elites can wear leftist slogans as fashion statements without actually doing anything productive or material to help those in need. It's literally just a fashion statement to these people. They're well off, so now all that's left to do with those phrases is to use them to feel good, basically. Or what about when people make millions of dollars promoting these phrases? Do they donate the money to charity? Do they start cooperatives or at least stop paying those who work for them as just contractors and pay them equally to what they're making? No, they buy luxury homes and apartments because it's not actually about people, it's about themselves. Who would have guessed that? Who would have guessed that godless degenerates who spread evil throughout society wouldn't actually care about their fellow man, but would instead exploit them for their own personal benefit under the guise of advocating for their best interest? Me, I would have guessed it because it's a tale as old as time. Now, think of the opposite, the idea of negative rights. It's about sacrifice. Maybe I really hate that guy's opinion, but I'll put up with it because it's his right. Maybe I'd feel safer without that guy owning a gun, but I'll put up with it because it's his right, etc. It's about sacrificing your subjective, personal desires for the God-given rights of others. And this is akin to Christianity, which is about sacrifice, among other things. It is about subjecting yourself to something greater than yourself, making that sacrifice, serving God, doing his will, doing good. And here's the difference, which sounds counterintuitive, but it is true. The conservative will focus on his community. He will focus on his neighbors, how they're doing, if they need help, his church, etc. As a result, the society is stabilized. It is full of good people. They all trust each other. They have relationships with each other. And resultantly, the individual can exist without anybody really trying to bother him. In contrast, the leftist will put all emphasis on the individual, or in other words, himself, his rights, what he believes that he's entitled to. And he will claim that it's to help out people who are oppressed, to help out the downtrodden in society, but of course it's not. It's simply to help himself. It's not even that their policies don't work and that they're all hypocrites in their personal lives. It's that literally it is about nothing more than the self, self-interest, pure selfishness, narcissism. This is why, as you're probably all recalling right now, that the most narcissistic people you will ever meet in your lives are all leftists because left-wing thought breeds narcissism. It destroys civilizations, whereas right-wing thought breeds sacrifice, and it builds civilizations. Same thing. Satanism encourages you to follow your desires, and resultantly, it destroys everything that it touches, whereas Christianity encourages you to follow God and to sacrifice your desires in tandem to that, and not coincidentally, the greatest, freest, most prosperous, most moral societies in the history of the world were founded upon Christianity, and as liberalism, aka rationalized Satanism, has usurped that power, the country has completely lost itself. And that's what we took for granted. When the United States was established, the people who settled here had come from those traditions, and I suppose it was just kind of expected that they would sustain themselves, but that just hasn't been the case. Like the church would sustain itself over time, but that hasn't been the case, unfortunately. And as we're seeing the results of that play out every day in America, we have to think if America became a Christian country again, the problems would go away to a huge extent. But a lot of people just aren't ready for that because they worship themselves. But they also think that they aren't a part of the problem because at least they're not as annoying or incessantly dramatic as these college liberals are. Well, I don't like organized religion. I don't like some book telling me that I can't watch pornography and sit around on my ass all day. And they're all, they're all hypocrites anyways, you know, these church folk. I want to worship alongside people as perfect as me. And then something, something about Catholic priests molesting boys, even though it's not at a rate higher than the clergy of any other religion, actually. And even then, I still send my kids to public school, which has a rate of child molestation astronomically higher than the Catholic church, by the way. But I don't know about that because I just read headlines for mainstream media, which is run by literal Satanists. Not to mention that they're teaching my kids in public schools to hate themselves because they're white, hate their country because it's white, question their gender, etc., etc. And my entire life has actually been a series of concessions and inaction. And I'm totally amoral, but I'll talk your ear off about how if the government tried to take my guns, I'd shoot them all. But not because they're the enforcement arm of a state that facilitates the genocide of millions of children every year or that promotes vice in society to destroy families and communities. I'm not going to do anything about that. I'm just going to watch sports ball. But... Because if the state takes my guns, then I won't have any guns to talk about using against the state if they ever tried to take my guns, which means I won't be able to pretend that I have actually any convictions or principles anymore, which will make me realize that the cost of my perpetual comfort and leisure has been my spine because I'm a man of yeast. I'm a dough. I'm a dough man. I'm a blob. I'm a coward. You're telling me Christians in the Middle East get lined up on their knees to watch dirt in front of them get painted with the faces of the people next to them just to go to church, their brothers and sisters. But all I have to do to go to church is start getting up a little bit earlier on Sunday morning. Buddy, I won't even get my phone charger. I won't even get my phone charger if I'm lying in bed and my phone's about to die. Are you kidding me? God made me this way. I love myself. I swear I love myself. That's why I can't get through the day without taking pills. 
pills and smoking and watching pornography and drinking and consuming half my body weight in sugar. This is the state of the American male. He is pathetic, he is weak, he is androgynous, and he is no better than those who are actively seeking the destruction of our country. He is complicit. It is through his inaction that he is complicit. He is gross. And we all know people like this. Yes, it's sad, it's unfortunate to illustrate, but it's true. Small government was never about giving people the freedom to do whatever they want. Freedom was never about just doing whatever you want or whatever feels good. It was always about getting the power out of the way so that men would be free to raise moral Christian families in a safe and prosperous society. That was the whole point. That's what the founders wanted. But it's easy to lose sight of that when you simply define freedom as the ability to pursue one's preferred method of self-destruction because you're too distracted by your own vices to realize that they have brainwashed you. Your judgment is too clouded. You are a slave to your own desires. You no longer have what it takes to live in a free, safe, and prosperous society. You don't have the discipline necessary to do that anymore. Freedom requires order. This is not a new idea. Everybody recognized this to be the case until roughly right after World War II. But the reason people think that this isn't the case and that I'm the one who's incorrect is because their entire political and philosophical education was given to them by the same people who have failed to conserve anything in our country during the same period of time where the most crucial ground was ceded to our enemies. And now the only reason that those ideas about small government and freedom so I can do whatever I want, the only reason that those can exist online is because the established order, which has total control now, does not view those ideas to be a legitimate challenge to their authority. And that's because they aren't. That concept of the world is not a threat to the established order of things. There's a reason that Donald Trump was kicked off Twitter, but the so radical and extreme edgy libertarian party accounts haven't been. There's a reason that I was kicked off Twitter, but mainstream conservatives who espouse the same talking points haven't been. And it's because they do not exist as a threat to the established order. And they don't even exist as conservatives, frankly. They exist effectively as these like pressure release valves to convince well-meaning patriots that they actually still have some representation left in this country because these publications and these pundits can like go viral on Facebook.com by making fun of AOC or by stating the fact that there are only two genders. And it's like, it's not enough. It will never be enough to look at a tyrannical government that is hostile towards its own people and say, I don't think that you should exist, but I have principles, so I'm not going to do anything to take that power back from you because you could then use that power against me again, and then I'd be back at square one. And I think that this makes sense because my understanding of power is equivalent to that of a child or a woman. And then the state basically says, oh, that's cute. It's not a legitimate idea. The only legitimate idea is to declare, I know what is good and I know that what you are doing is bad and I'm going to take that power away from you and I'm going to use it for good and I'm going to keep bad people from ever obtaining it again by holding on to it with an iron grip because I have now learned that the power vacuum is impossible to achieve and it almost cost me my country to learn that and maybe it will. That is the general idea that gets people kicked out. That gets people in trouble. If you're only interested in thinking about how we can just possibly return to an earlier stage of liberal decline, then you're not a serious person. If there is to be a future in this country, then it begins by figuring out how to keep people who basically want to like rape and brainwash your kids from ever even approaching a position of public influence or power ever again. And it is completely achievable. Just look at our history. It did not used to be like this. We can get back to that point if we start taking things seriously and stop just like pointing and laughing every time Joe Biden stumbles through a sentence. <laughs> you can't talk. That's not to say ridicule is not important, by the way. It is, but there's a balance to be achieved between serious and unserious. And whatever we're doing right now clearly is not working. And I think on that, at least we can agree. Bruh. John Doyle, stay on topic without berating right-wing weakness challenge. Improbable. It's so true. But anyways, uh, we talked about the conflict of good and evil, about the classification of man as basically good or as flawed, and the implications of all of that politically. And I think the conflict of good versus evil as like the eternal conflict is basically correct. And I think it calls back yet again to our friend the horseshoe theory of practical intelligence, where less intelligent people would tell you it's all the good guys versus all the bad guys. Then you'd have the average intelligence people, the normies, the midwits, and they'd tell you, no, it's about competing interests and subjective understandings of morality and precedence and blah, blah, blah. But then you'd have the hyper-intelligent people like aggression and conflict are not inherently wrong. The side aggressing in accordance with good is correct and we can always deduce this given that we know right from wrong, etc. So then it's like, okay, how do we know good? Well, because we have the Bible and it's written on your heart. And I told you, I wasn't gonna preach to you today, so I won't. However, you should at least understand that everything that's going on in society right now that you think is evil, the Bible also says that it's evil, and the Bible also predicted that all of this would happen. So that might be worth taking into account. So at the very least, we'll talk about how what is evil is what is being pushed by the left. And then in the next video, of course, we'll be talking about the links between specifically Christianity and conservatism. One of those points being that if we are as God made us, then hierarchy is inevitable. What does leftism reject? Hierarchy. And this is why leftism, broadly speaking, 
king is inherently godless and has demonstrably been such throughout history without exception. Like, how can communists slaughter tens of millions of people? Because they're godless. They don't universally value human life. And generally speaking, without God, you cannot be good. You can be incidentally good, but the point is that it should not be surprising that the greatest examples of evil in human history can be shown to have been perpetrated by people who were either godless or who were worshiping demons, including what's going on in our predominant culture right now. So my message to you right now is not that demons are real, not that you need to repent and accept Jesus Christ. Might be a good idea though. I don't know. Uh, it's simply that if the Bible were true, and I don't feel as though you're entitled to a spoiler alert because it's been out for a couple thousand years now, you should have read it by now, but spoiler alert, it's true. My point is just to show you how all of the evil that we know is being pushed by the left overlaps almost perfectly with Satanism, which vindicates the Bible. And I have one more thing to tell you about before we really dive into the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. It really is more of a question. Folks, it's getting crazier out there, is it not? And more and more of you are choosing to exercise your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms with American-made We the People holsters. Those of you who aren't are going to wish that you would listen to me when the consequences of leftism are staring you in the face. But these guys are more than just holsters. They're becoming a destination for patriots patriotic Americans just like yourself. So go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. Check out their complete line of patriotic shirts. They're a 100% American-made tactical gun belt with a proprietary talent buckle. And you might say, well, that sounds great, but it's not like they have their own line of bacon jerky. And even if they did, it's unlikely that it would be flying off the shelves. Well, you look like an idiot right now because the opposite is true. They actually do have their own and it is actually flying off the shelves. I mean, that is somewhat hyperbolic. You know, they still have like a stock that they can send you. It's not quite yet like in this sort of post-Biden grocery store type situation. I'm just trying to say that it's good. Plus, We The People holsters are custom molded to fit your exact firearm for a quick, smooth draw with thousands of options to choose from. Plus, a selection of custom printed holsters. You are sure to find just the right fit for your lifestyle. So go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. Right now, get an additional $10 off with the offer code Doyle. Every holster with a lifetime guarantee. If it's not a perfect fit, send it back. Get a full refund. wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. Very epic. We are now free to consume the meat and potatoes. There's going to be four brackets to this. We're going to talk more specifically about the general overlap between liberalism and Satanism, and then we'll discuss that within the context of the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple. Then we're going to analyze two common cultural practices uh, to better illustrate what we're talking about, which will be drag queen story hour and abortion. Then we'll tie it all together, and then you're out of here. Ready, set, go. Okay. Uh, so you ever think about how our society is completely upside down, like everything's inverted, everything is backwards? That is by design. What Satan seeks to do is draw us away from God, and he does this by mobilizing his forces to pervert everything that God created, make it wrong, make it backwards, make it unnatural. So just keep that in mind as we go forward that ultimately what Satan, who is very clever and very deceptive, wants you to do is turn away from God and essentially sell your soul. He wants you to sacrifice your soul at the altar of wealth, fame, pleasure, whatever. And liberalism as a whole, anything left wing, broadly speaking, views the world through the lens of something called humanism. And that is basically defined as an ideology that places supreme authority in human beings as opposed to nature or God. And its purpose is to further human beings, further being subjectively defined by human beings themselves. And this is, of course, related to these ideas of progressivism and progress, because it's thought that human beings have progressed past the point where we need God, that those ideas are outdated or archaic. And so without God at the top of the hierarchy, we have elevated ourselves to the top of the hierarchy to where now we think that we're gods, that we know what's best, that we can do what we want. We can decide all of this subjectively. There is no good and bad, but now tolerance and intolerance. And this, of course, is completely opposed to Christianity, which is why throughout history, you will see that the greatest enemies to Christian societies have always been leftists, socialists, humanists, etc., because they took the golden rule from Christianity, as outlined in Matthew 7, and they reconfigured it to be the elimination of any inequality between human beings, which of course is unnatural and impossible to achieve. This is opposite to Christian and conservative thought, which says that just as we acknowledge that hierarchy is real, that some are better at you know certain things than others are, we acknowledge that God is bigger than us. He knows what is best. He knows why we are here. Therefore, we submit ourselves to his authority. We make that choice. That's what faith is. We acknowledge that there is right and wrong. And so we try to do everything we can to squash it in our own lives and also in society, because we know that if we allow sin to proliferate within society, then that society will become sick and it will continue to fester and rot and eventually it will be beyond our control to solve. Now, a common objection to Christian morality is the smugness and sense of moral superiority that we've seen a million times before with Christians, but I would offer a few counterpoints to that. Firstly, pride is a sin, and we're all sinners, and it's unrealistic to want to worship alongside people as without sin as you may think that you are. Secondly, 
I don't even think that this is a Christian problem. I was thinking about this recently. I think it's just a woman problem. Like I've never seen this from men at the church. It's always the white women. It's always the black women and sometimes the Hispanic women, but I would argue that it's much less common. And it's like, you look at that same sense of moral superiority when it's not happening in the church and it's the same people. It's the white liberals, it's the black liberals, et cetera. It's liberal feminine men and women. So let's be clear. It's not a church problem. It's a woman problem. And the Bible literally tells you about this in the first few pages. It warns you. You read Genesis, you read First Timothy, you'll see what I mean. But on that point, that sense of moral superiority that we see so often from people on the left is stemming from pride. And you can tell because it's always delivered with this great degree of smugness. Like you would never see someone who's actually morally superior be like, sorry, sweetie, murder's wrong. Okay. Oh, you poor baby. You never learned that stealing purses from old ladies is wrong. I feel so bad for you, right? Like that's not what happens. It's always people who are blinded by their pride telling you what is wrong is actually right, which is totally backwards. And they do it so smugly. And pride is satanic because it's leading you towards self-worship and spiritual independence. And the devil laughs while it happens. And I've said before that the vast majority of leftist thought basically exists as a series of rationalizations for why they're addicted to touching their own pee pee. And I stand by that 100%. And this is a part of that because so much of what they're saying is just condescending nonsense, which is meant to justify their own vice and sin. They know it's wrong. They feel the guilt and that makes them anxious, which makes them aggressive. They get defensive, but their weakness also has made them feminine. So that's where the passive aggression comes from. That's where the condescending comes from. The same way that if you criticized an alcoholic, they'd get defensive and lash out at you. So the point is that if if you have a problem with pride and smugness, you have a problem with sin and with the left. So we're still in the same boat here. And a great political example of the contrast between a godly society and a group of communists using Satan to attack that society, or actually, I should say a group of communists being used by Satan, that would probably be more accurate. But the greatest examples in somewhat recent history, other than of course our own country right now, would be two of the most unfortunate things to ever happen in all time, which were the French and Russian revolutions. And basically what happened is that there was a very influential fellow named John Milton, who of course wrote Paradise Lost, and he had unintentionally depicted a version of Satan that ended up being of critical importance in both of those revolutions against strong Christian nations because it was a depiction of Satan that was perceived to be positive by the people. And if you look at the Church of Reason that was established during the French Revolution, it shares the exact tenets of modern day Satanism, which we'll go over um, and explain momentarily. But the point is that essentially that depiction of Satan was used by the communists to undermine the strong Christian faith that the populations had, which enabled them to take over. Um, John, elaborate on how exactly the French Revolution was communist if it took place before the communist manifesto was even written no but it was actually and if you had an understanding of history that was more nuanced than just looking at two dates you would agree with me but just keep that in mind as we get into the tenets of modern satanism how there's sort of this attitude in the culture of oh hell is where all the cool people are gonna be well sounds like fun satan seems pretty chill you get to do whatever you want but they will find out that such is not the case and the boys and i will be vindicated once again but think about that you can just do whatever you want when has that ever been a good idea? Have you ever heard the phrase, if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is, the toll will always be paid. What would happen if you let a child simply do whatever he wanted to do? He would eat a bunch of candy and ice cream and then he would feel very sick afterwards. Now, scale the level of intelligence proportionately. You understand sugar better than like a child might, right? It may get you by. But do you think that your understanding of the world around you is sophisticated enough to where you can simply do as you please and that you will be unfailingly acting in your best interest? Of course not. But this is what Satanism and liberalism sell to people. If it feels good, just do it, man. Satan wants you to separate yourself from God so that he can have your soul. And the left wants to make you as weak as possible so they can have total control over you. And of course, there's overlap there, but it isn't black and white, the question of whether man is inherently good or inherently bad. Remember earlier, we talked about this... Um, and I mentioned that the left thinks that man's nature is basically good and the right is skeptical of the nature of man, meaning we acknowledge that man's nature is flawed, though he can cultivate virtue if he chooses to do so. This is one of the problems with libertarianism. I just did a debate actually with Austin Peterson on uh, conservatism versus libertarianism, which you can check out on Elijah Schaefer's channel. And he at one point said that people are basically good and can therefore be trusted with total freedom, which adds up given that liberalism and libertarianism are basically cousins. But then later in the debate, he implied that the reason for limiting the power of the state would be that man's nature is either flawed or corruptible, which I tend to agree with, and that would actually be the conservative position. And to that you might say, well, it's power that corrupts man, not freedom. But by definition, freedom is literally power. It's empowerment. But not everyone who is free to purchase a rifle will use it against innocent people, just like not everyone who holds power will use it against innocent people. Our problem is that our system incentivizes the most immoral and corrupt people to seek power. And just like the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, the only thing that can stop a bad guy with power is a good guy with power. But we continue. 
we talked about how all evil is rooted in self-worship and selfishness. This is true. And you see much of this selfishness masquerading as advocacy for the common good. But of course, this is not the case. This is the left-wing position, and it is perfectly aligned with the doctrines of Satanism because it is rooted in pride, rooted in greed, envy, etc. And the greatest evidence of this, as we discussed, is that these people use these talking points to amass fortunes, and then they keep it all for themselves, and they give none of it to the people for whom they claim to advocate. And this isn't to say that there's something inherently wrong with making a lot of money and then keeping it. However, if you're making that money by claiming to represent people and then you don't actually do it, that is wrong because the product that you're selling them is false hope, even if what they're hoping for is stupid. So the liberal position is essentially this, self-worship masquerading as the common good. They view those around them as cattle to exploit for their own benefit, and they convince them to follow along by claiming that it's actually in their best interest. The right-wing position is exactly opposite, and it aligns quite well with the Christian position, which is sacrificing for the common good to achieve true individual prosperity. Think about it. Making sacrifices, whether that's for your family, for your neighbors, for your community, whatever it may be, those sacrifices will ultimately create a better environment to you or for you to thrive in as an individual. And this is what the Bible calls um, us to do as well. So the left will pursue this extreme emphasis on what they desire, free healthcare, free college, free money, whatever. They will claim it's to help the downtrodden masses, but ultimately they don't actually care about them. They only care about themselves. Whereas the right will emphasize more on self-sacrifice for the common good because they know that it is like that truly good society that will allow them to prosper as an individual. And that's the difference. The left says, you have to sacrifice for my benefit. And the right says, I will sacrifice for your and my benefit. It is the prioritization of the positive rights, the rights of entitlement, which they believe will benefit them directly because they worship themselves, uh, which is satanic versus the prioritization of negative rights, which provide the indirect benefit of a better, safer, more prosperous society. We talked about this earlier, but um, I hope that explanation kind of brings it f full circle that uh, the left-wing position is identical to what the devil wants, which is envy, wrath, pride, and greed acting as tributaries to the individual self-worship. And then the right-wing position properly defined would be things like charity, temperance, fortitude, all applied in pursuit of something greater than oneself, uh, than oneself which would basically be uh, aligned with what God wants. So there's a couple more things I want to outline here before we dive into the tenets of modern Satanism, and again, why they're perfectly aligned with liberalism, and then we'll illustrate um, this with things like like abortion and drag queens in particular before tying it all together. But there's another distinction between left-wing and right-wing thought that translates well within a biblical context, which is the distinction between temperance and indulgence. Temperance is inherently right-wing and indulgence is inherently left-wing. Why is temperance inherently right-wing? Uh, because it implies an order to things that goes beyond the purely carnal desires of the self to recognize that you could do something, but that you ought not do it. That's an acknowledgement of something greater than yourself, whether that's the future, uh, that's God, whatever it may be. Whereas indulgence is is hedonism. Indulgence says, if it feels good, do it. You are not bound by anything other than your desires and what you want. Now, maybe what you want is to not indulge, but even that is a little bit different because it still places serving yourself at the top of the pyramid, what you want. Whereas actions of temperance, broadly speaking, tend to place God or family or nation above all else. So it's essentially the difference between do what makes you happy, let people enjoy things, and having discipline. Left-wing thought is rooted in chaos, revolution, femininity, whereas right-wing thought is rooted in order, tradition, and masculinity. So indulgence is left-wing, temperance is right-wing. So what are some examples of indulgence and hedonism? Uh, the sexual revolution, promotion of drug use, the body positivity and or fat acceptance movement, etc. What are some examples of temperance? Anything that opposes that, basically. And so this is why there's a war on, like, vanilla. There's a reason that I said I could talk for two hours about how vanilla ice cream is inherently right-wing, which it is. And that is because it is simple. It is natural. The left declares anything vanilla to be boring. And this is because they fried their ability to enjoy things normally, and so they have to take a bunch of extra steps because they couldn't control themselves from the beginning. And this is why they get into these really weird sexual kinks and pretend that everybody else are the weird ones. It's a cope. It is literally just a cope. It's an argument for hedonism. And the reason this is dangerous is because it fits perfectly into that biblical context that we mentioned earlier, because the devil seeks to lead us away from God with earthly pleasures. Look at this thing. It feels good. You should do it, right? Oh, wait, God said you shouldn't? Well, he must not really love you then. And before you know it, after continuously giving in to your desires, you will be in a state of despair. And this is something that's important to note. The emphasis on the individual and their ability to do whatever they want as a justification for that will inevitably involve the collective because as individuals pursue whatever they think will make them happy, they become lost in despair. The actions then must be normalized and promoted in society as a desperate means of potentially alleviating that guilt. Like th there's a reason that it was never actually about private individuals in 
the privacy of their own home. But we bought into that lie regardless. Think about it. You don't know exactly what makes you happy. It's a lot easier to nail down what makes you miserable and avoid doing that instead. And this can be reflected in the data as well. But everyone I know who is enslaved to their vices and who reached that point by initially indulging in their desires, operating under the guise of, this feels good. I like this. It makes me happy. They are now the most miserable people. It's really, it, it's a sad thing. There's a reason that the coalition that thinks that human existence can be boiled down to, if it feels good, do it, also don't be mean, is more mentally ill than the coalition who thinks it's probably a bit more complicated than that. If you wanna see a general prediction of what our country's gonna look like if we continue down the path of self-worship, take a look at Australia. I love Australia. I think that they're arguably our greatest ally, if not at least top two. We've got a lot of viewers from Australia. They are very fine people, and they'll probably agree with what I'm about to say. So just know that I mean no disrespect by this, but there is a reason that Australia is experiencing one of the greatest tyrannies that the world has ever seen right now. And that reason is because their country in particular, I believe it's considered to be like the most irreligious country in the world, or at least one of them, but their country has abandoned God in favor of self-worship. And it really is that black and white. Like you either worship God or you worship yourself. Something's gonna be at the top of that hierarchy. And if it's not God, it's you. And what happens in that culture that elevates self-worship, that elevates positive rights instead of negative rights, that doesn't worship God? Tyranny and evil. There are two artifacts in particular that were and are foundational to the United States of America and that were not to Australia. And those are very simply Bibles and rifles. And the reason you have a second amendment is because it is your God-given right to defend yourself, which is something to which Australia never subscribes. So what happens without the Bible, without an acknowledgement of God-given rights, without a culture that believes in something greater than themselves? They give in to narcissism and fear. And we're right on the way there too. Just look at how the narcissism index has skyrocketed in the last few decades, but think about it. I don't care about your right to defend yourself because I feel scared of guns, and there go the guns. I don't care about your right to like literally go about your life because I feel scared of getting sick, and just like that, tyranny. You cannot escape tyranny in a godless society. You are either living under tyranny or you're on your way there because if people don't believe in God, then they fear death. They fear the reality of their own impermanence. They fear what happens after they die. And because of that fear, they cling to life and they can be so easily manipulated by a state and a state adjacent media that tells them your life is in danger because of this thing that you otherwise wouldn't have even known about. Or as religious people know that we win in the end. We know that everything is under control. We do not fear death. Would we prefer to not die? More or less, yeah, but we do not live in fear. This too is why the writers of our constitution said that this could only function with a religious people and that everything else would not work. That is not vague. That is because tyranny requires fear and fear requires the absence of God. In other words, as we've said before, keep your Bible and your rifle by your side and you will be okay, big guy. But of course, it's much easier said than done because we'd much rather audaciously deny the will of God to pursue material pleasures. That's why you see all this rhetoric coming from the left about love yourself, accept yourself who you are, which is always in response to people basically being terrible and degenerate. And it's like, no, to accept yourself for who you are is to recognize that you are a child of God and your fallen nature manifested as habitual sin is nothing to be praised. The sense of despair that you feel for your lifestyles is not because of people like me. You're not gonna convince me for a second that you actually care about the opinions of people like me, but rather it is the inevitable result of living in sin, that sense of despair. And so they have to cope by saying, well, it's because people judge me and make me feel bad for it. We have to normalize it so that it doesn't happen anymore. No, it's because you literally are being lured away from God by demons into this sense of despair. There has never ever been a story of someone who was a degenerate sinner who opted to live as a devout Christian for 60 days to prove that it's pointless, whose life then did not substantially improve. It doesn't exist. But the pursuit of earthly pleasures prevents most from doing this. And we see this promoted by the left with all of the institutional power that they have because the global left is the greatest political force for Satanism in the history of the world, because it simply promotes the doctrines of Satanism without actually mentioning Satan by employing the greatest trick of them all, simply pretending that the devil doesn't exist. Lucifer wanted to worship himself. Liberalism wants to worship the divine self. Nothing can impose itself on me. Not biology, not language, truth, objective truth, nothing. And of all things, of all things in the world, what is liberalism the most preoccupied with? Think about it. Of all things, what can the vast majority of it be traced back to? Sex. We'll talk about why a bit later into this, but there is nothing that makes these people take to the streets like issues pertaining to feminism, pertaining to abortion, etc. Those are all sexual issues. And you might say, well, what about Black Lives Matter? That's different. That's just like black people in general who, yes, are overwhelmingly liberal, but I'm talking about if you had a sample of a thousand Democrat voters, the issues that are most likely to get these people into the streets or to get them like melting down on social media 
media are all issues that can be traced back to sex. And this is very simply because sex is the most powerful force of our nature. It's what creates life. It is the ultimate reflection of the natural order, which liberalism and Satanism seek to totally destroy. Think about it. Liberalism has sought to completely invert everything that we understand about sexual behavior. They have inverted what sex is as a bimodal reality, that there are two genders who each have separate biological hardware to facilitate the creation of human life, and that this additionally has implications on everything from their interests and behaviors to their physical statures. They have inverted who sex is for. They have watered down its definition to pretend that what was understood inherently uh, as something that's procreative is now just like a different version of like the spectrum of acts, including when a man masturbates his into another man's that that's the same thing fundamentally, just a different type of it, which is what they'll tell you. And of course, they've inverted its purpose in general, why we have sex. Not to create life, you can abort that life if it's inconvenient to you. Not to bond to your wife or to your husband, but simply to feel good as promoted by the sexual revolution, feminism, etc. It is the complete inversion of reality. Why is everything so backwards nowadays? Because that is exactly what both Satanism and liberalism seek to do. And we're going to go over exactly how right now, but I do first have to say that if you want to see more examples beyond what we just mentioned, uh, go watch How the 2010s Changed Politics Forever, and there will be a link to that in the description. Okay, so... Now we are going to get into the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple, all that fun stuff. And so the first thing to understand about Satanism is that people who are Satanists are not necessarily actively worshiping Satan, or they don't necessarily believe that he exists. And obviously, this makes no difference to him, since if you practice Satanism, uh, he's going to get your soul when you die, regardless of whether or not you actually believed in him. So he doesn't really care. But the Church of Satan was established under the guise of self-worship, just like we've been talking about earlier. And of course, this recalls the other point that we made, which is that there really is a dichotomous understanding of existence, where it is either God or you at the top of the hierarchy. And a rejection of God and or a prioritization of the self are exactly what the devil wants. But of course, he has a silver tongue and it's much better marketing to tell people, oh, just do what you want than it would be to tell them to outright reject God since the latter would set off more red flags probably. But of course, either avenue will still grant him access to your soul in the end. So he doesn't really care. So I'd never actually read, by the way, um, the nine statements from the Church of Satan before. This is because, of course, I'm not a godless heathen. But in reading them while outlining this video, I was legitimately surprised at how obvious it is that evil forces are at work. Like, I really thought that it would be more subtle than it is, but it's not. And anyone with a fundamental understanding of Christianity will see what I mean. So we'll go through these one by one and then explain why they lead away from God and also how they are perfectly in alignment with left-wing philosophy. And by the way, if you don't already hate the Antichrist, you definitely will after we're done with this because he is a sneaky bastard. And as a result of that, Satanism as a religion is really like the most powerful religion in the world. And what I mean by that is that it really just has this unrivaled ability to just easily influence the masses since it is about self-worship and people are flawed and prideful and narcissistic. And so this appeals to them because we act as animals who basically try to fulfill our most primitive desires. Also, we will give a general summary of each of these as they fit into liberal philosophy, but the greatest proof is to simply ask any left-wing person you know if they disagree with any of these. And none of them would disagree with any of them. So the first one is, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. And we talked about this earlier as it pertains to how the left and the right view this um, and how the satanic view is obviously to indulge rather than to abstain because it exploits our flawed nature to drive us away from God in the pursuit of earthly pleasures, which corrode our spirits. And then, of course, the Christian position is the opposite of this, putting God above all else. But basically, all of these are the church of Satan trying to appeal to those desires and make everything else seem boring, which echoes one of the realities of existence, which is simply that oftentimes what is good is boring whether that's responsibility, eating non-poison food, etc. So the next one is, Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. And what this means is that Satan represents living in the moment, making the most out of these vital moments instead of this unrealistic idea of something happening after we die. And this is, of course, just another argument or justification for hedonism, for living in the eternal present. Because as we've discussed, being abstinent or being of temperance requires that you acknowledge something greater than yourself. You are planning for something. You are delaying gratification, etc. This is what builds families, builds nations, communities, and also what enables them to be moral, prosperous, and free. And so naturally, liberalism and Satanism would seek to erode that because liberal philosophy has always rejected the concepts of delayed gratification because that requires that the individual is to be subject to the constraints of the future, which do not necessarily affect them immediately. It has always been about the complete and total freedom to exist in the state of the eternal present. And Satanism would, of course, advocate for this as well, since Satan must convince you that there is no afterlife. There's nothing after this. You're going to die, and then when you die, it's over. So you may as well just do whatever you want while you're here. And it's not like you're going to be held accountable for this or anything. That's just, that's just a pipe dream, which is exactly what he wants you to believe so that he can steal your soul for eternity. And by the way, a lot of you might be skeptical when I say that, but 
If I'm wrong, it just means that I didn't get to take advantage of girls with low self-esteem or do drugs or whatever. Whereas if you're wrong, you're literally going to have your soul ripped from your body and yeeted into hellfire for eternity. Anyways, we continue. The next one is Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. The point of this one is to allude to being able to rationalize logically your own desires, which is why they say undefiled wisdom. They're basically saying, oh, religion? <laughs> That's been debunked. That's not wisdom. That's defiled. We know better now. And this is exactly what liberalism seeks to do as well. Liberalism seeks to define truth by what the science says. But the science is sponsored and conducted by the regime, which also censors anything that threatens it. The studies that have been conducted, which actually prove that sin leads to despair, those are aren't a part of the mainstream conversation. What occupies the mainstream conversation are studies and experts who claim that all of these things are normal and healthy, actually. And that is because the regime is not threatened by a population in despair who don't know God. The only thing that threatens their power over you is a class of people who are not in despair and who know God and who do not fear death or them. It's a strategy. It's easy to prove that killing people is harmful, but it's not as easy to prove that casual sex is harmful, though both are true. And like we said, the devil doesn't care either way as long as he gets your soul. So the strategy is to feign morality by saying, well, don't harm people, which connotes anti-violence sentiment. But of course, you can harm people without committing violence against them. But the point is that this is all to allude to this idea of, oh yeah, those social conventions, well, they were never based on anything real. No, that, that was just all people wanting to control you for no reason. Just do what makes you happy. And of course, this is coming from the coalition of people that use their power to usher in the greatest tyranny that the globe has ever seen over the course of the last two years, except for maybe two examples from the 20th century. It's an exploitation of man's pride. Oh, well, God said, don't do this. Well, don't you worry. We know better now. We're wiser. And the other half of it hits the buzzword. It talks about hypocrisy because one of the biggest criticisms of Christianity from a religious people has always been hypocrisy, which is fair enough. We talked about this earlier, but hypocrisy is not an argument against Christianity. It's actually an argument for it because it concedes that human nature is flawed and that we all fall short of the glory of God. And the anti-Christian argument has always been, well, you know, maybe if we can't meet the standards, then the standards don't or shouldn't exist. This is stupid. It is objectively true that a world without sin would be perfect, and to argue otherwise is just dishonest. The reason we can't achieve this isn't because the standards don't actually exist, but because of our nature. So given that, it would be better to acknowledge that and strive to be better instead of basically like pouting over it and giving up. Hypocritical self-deceit. What they're saying is the standards aren't true, and even if they were, people can't meet them. It's not self-deceit. As we just said, but it's also not hypocritical. It's not hypocritical to declare that sin is wrong and then to sin through a moment of weakness and then repent for that sin. Hypocrisy would be saying, well, sin's wrong and then just going about sinning without any repentance or prayer. It's not hypocritical to know and declare that sin is wrong and then to sin because you're just weak. Like, God knows that. He will forgive you for that if you repent, but you have to humble yourself before him to do that, which unfortunately many people just don't want to do because of their pride. So Satan likes this because it rejects the concept of sin in favor of whatever the regime experts say, which will grant him your soul. And the left likes this because it allows them to, con uh, to continue to live in the eternal present while criticizing those who dissent by claiming that they're hypocrites. We continue. The next one is Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. This one is particularly sneaky because it uses uses the word kindness for those who deserve it. And it says not to waste love on ingrates. The Bible teaches to love God above all else, but below that, to love one another. Uh, being kind to someone, though, is much different than loving them. Because if you love someone, it suggests that you seek to do whatever is objectively in their best interest, or at the very least, will avoid doing things that are bad for them. Kindness is different. It's not being good. It's not doing good. It's just being kind. And only to those who deserve it, as defined by literal Satanists. And also not wasting love on people who they described as ingrates. This is direct Directly in contrast, of course, to the Christian understanding and also the right-wing understanding because Christians acknowledge the universal value of human life um, and conservatives do as well as indicated by their staunch advocacy for things like the right to life and the right to bear arms, which both presuppose that human life is universally valuable and therefore worth preserving, whereas the left perceives life to be basically of conditional value, meaning the value of the life is defined by how convenient it is to whoever has more power. A mother can kill a child if it's inconvenient to her. A communist dictator can kill his political opposition because they are inconvenient to him, etc. And so these are both things that are openly celebrated by the left.
And of course, Satanism fundamentally rejects the value of human life as something universally, or I should say uniquely special. So this one is basically saying that you should only be kind to people who deserve it, which ostensibly means other Satanists or people who at least aren't convicted enough to object to the widespread promotion of sin. And then it says also that you shouldn't love anyone who isn't a part of that thinking because they're ingrates, they're lesser than, etc. You can be kind to someone and still exploit them though, to get what you want. But that doesn't mean that you're actually doing something good for them as though you love them. For example, Satan is very kind when he grants you fame and fortune, but it's only because he wants your soul in exchange. And the same goes for all of these vices. And this fits perfectly within the liberal worldview, which abandons rights and wrong in favor of tolerance and intolerance. And the people who are intolerant are therefore immoral and don't deserve respect or even acknowledgement or a presence in society. And the next one is, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. This is obviously in contrast to the Christian teaching, as it even mentions, and that's because anger and grudges are like a poison. They're very bad for you. It's better to be free from those energies. But Satanism would prefer that you give in to those desires that allow uh, for the anger to fester inside of you, that you become this like bitter, hateful person, etc. And of course, the left are mostly bitter, resentful, mentally ill people who would have no problem enacting mass revenge on those who they perceive to be a threat to their utopian, egalitarian society under the guise of, it's called accountability. It's called, don't be an asshole. You're mean. It really is that simple. So... The next one is Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. And this is just another way of saying that you only have to care about people who are non-threatening to your worldview and to your desires, even if the only capacity in which they're a threat is through judgment or advocacy against it. They don't matter. They're actually a psychic vampire or whatever. Satan likes this because it rejects that we are called to care for our neighbors. And the left likes it because it justifies their ingrained selfishness. They weren't going to care about their neighbors anyways, but it's better for them if they can pretend that it's because they didn't like display a hate has no home here sign on their front lawn. We continue. Satan represents man as just another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those who walk on all fours, who, because of his divine spiritual and intellectual development, has become the most vicious animal of all. And again, this is alluding to this idea of wrong being synonymous with violence, and therefore because the heckin' animal arenos don't murder people like people do, they're better than us. No, they're not. I'm still team human. The reason Satanists promote this idea is because it rejects the idea that human beings are special and that God made us in his image, which calls into question the universality of human value. Since if we're just like animals and we kill animals, we must not be that special either, right? And the left likes this because they're very feminine and they simp for animals, and it's also very easy to implements very severe regulations in society under the guise of, no, we must help the animals save the trees. Shut up, hippie. Animals like dying. Ah, yes, a soldier's death. Thank you, kind hunter. Quote every animal ever. A cow that is slaughtered and eaten has lived a more meaningful life than the average mid-30s man who just watches Marvel movies and works in HR. It's true. Also, these man-animal themes will come up later as we discuss the relationship between drag queens and demons, but we continue. Satan represents all the so-called sins as they all lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. This is very misleading. It's actually dangerous. Gratification is much different than happiness or even contentment. It is true that you will feel gratification or pleasure when you sin. But after that fades away, which it always will, it will leave you feeling in a state of despair. Maybe not a lot, but as you continue down the path, it gets worse. And you continue sinning, trying to numb that feeling with the continued indulgence in earthly pleasures. It's a very bad cycle. So yeah, Satan is literally saying here, I like sins because they feel good. It feels good, so you should do it. Which, of course, is akin to the effective motto of the left, which is also, if it feels good, do it. And it has been forever. Just like in the Garden of Eden, Satan is luring you away from God with the promise of gratification. And it's just like in Genesis. It's the feminine energy that is the most susceptible to this. Women and weak men. The literal coalition of the global left. Anyways, last one. Satan has the always been the best friend the church has ever had. He's kept it in business all these years. No, he hasn't, you idiot. The church is still in business in spite of Satan, not because of him. He's not our friend. We hate the Antichrist. But Satanists like this idea because it gets back to their very vague narrative of Christianity just trying to, like, control people for no reason. And they'd much rather have people descend into a perpetual state of sin. And I can't say that the left really aligns with this, but you definitely see traces of it within their whole brand of, like, this 
smug George Carlin-esque cynicism. Very cringe. But the point of all of this is that there is no real difference and there is no practical difference between atheism, Satanism, and liberalism because they're all effectively a rejection of God in favor of worship of the self. And there really is no real or effective difference between the goals of Satanism or the goals of liberalism. As we discussed, they are the same in practice. They are naturalist ideas. Socialism, leftism, atheism, Satanism, they are all apples from the same perverted tree. Literally just look at the Satanic Creed. Do what thou wilt. What is the translation of this in modern politics. Shh, let people enjoy things. That's literally the Reddit version of the satanic creed. They are all the same idea. They are the same in practice and they serve the same master, but it's not God and it's not even yourself, even though you're made to believe that it is. It's actually Satan. So those are the nine satanic statements. Now I will go over the seven tenets of the satanic temple in the same format because believe it or not, the satanic temple is actually more influential and deceptive than the church of Satan. So we'll do that now. And all of these as well perfectly align with the tenets of liberalism as we will explain. So the first one is, one should strive to act with compassion and empathy towards all creatures in accordance with reason. This is, of course, uh, a key tenet of utilitarianism, which is closely related to liberalism and often develops alongside liberal philosophy because both emphasize compassion to the entire society regardless of the situation. But it has to be in accordance with their subjectively defined reason, which is usually going to be whatever the narratives of the regime are. And so resultantly, we see people not being held accountable, claiming that it's because of their environment. It's because of socioeconomic factors. Well, they were just born like this, etc. However, if anybody dares to challenge the amoral vacuum by asserting that right and wrong do exist, then they are to be shut down because they actually pose a threat to the established order. Also, their use of the word creatures, very cringe. It's the same thing that we mentioned earlier. It's elevating animal lives to the value of human lives to reject the concept of universal human value and the fact that we are made in the image of God. And of course, Satan likes this because it maintains the amoral power vacuum, which he can fill, and it, den it denies the relationship between man and God by adding the creatures and the within reason clauses. So we continue. Uh, the second one is, the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. And again, this is all within the context of how they define reason which means that social justice takes precedence over laws and institutions. And now you wonder why they went after Kyle so intensely, why the regime doesn't prosecute, let alone even track leftist violence. What's going to happen to you as someone who exists outside of the radius of their compassion and whose life can no longer be protected by the laws which are deemed irrelevant to the mob rule? Not good. So the left likes this because it justifies their suppression of any opposition to them. And Satan likes this because he masquerades his intentions with vague moral narratives to capture the energy of the masses and use it to do his bidding. Great example, the social justice of women's rights, something that compels millions of people to take to the streets every year, millions of mothers to take to the streets. And the end result is the slaughtering of millions of unborn children all under the guise of justice. And we will be talking extensively about abortion in a moment, but let us continue. The next one, is one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. Ah, uh, yes, the divine will of the individual. Nice try, Satan. We've been covering this for years and we think it's dumb. The point being that nobody, this is like a needle in a haze. No, actually a Trojan horse is better because no one actually thinks that this is some like bold statement against slavery or against like forced organ transplants or something like that. That's not what it's intended to be, even if that's what it claims. What this is really trying to do is justify abortion under the guise of bodily autonomy or whatever. So as we know, the idea of freedoms and rights stems from liberalism with Satanism and leftism taking the view of positive rights, which means they believe that they have a right to an abortion because it's their own body and the rights of the baby are second to the rights of the woman and that another person cannot control their body even if to protect the life of the child. So again, the whole point of this is to advocate for the genocide of unborn children, which of course the left wants since abortion is the ultimate achievement of liberal philosophy, which we'll explain. And of course, Satan likes this because he likes child sacrifice and the shedding of innocent blood. And he doesn't have the power to kill your child. So instead he whispers into your ear so that you do it instead. And then he takes your soul in the process. Scary stuff. Yet we continue because we fear no evil. So the next one, the freedoms of others should be respected, including a freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. Now this one actually sounds like it might be good. Well, to be fair, they all sound good on paper. But remember, when they're talking about rights and freedoms, they're not talking about your God-given rights. They reject those, remember? They're talking about rights and freedoms within the context of social justice and what they define to be reasonable. And since you exist outside of that context because of what you believe, you are not extended any compassion or respect. Do you really think that when they say freedom to offend, they're talking about, well, facts don't care about your feelings, gang. No, no. 
you would not have the freedom to offend them by dissenting against the narratives of social justice. That rule is written for them and not for you. Think about it. When this was written, they were trying to take control of the culture, a culture that was predominantly Christian. So what do they do? They usher in all of their vulgarity and blasphemy and degeneracy under the guise of having freedom of expression and freedom of speech and the freedom to offend. And Americans were stupid and just accepted that. And look where that got us. So like all of this, the left likes it because it justifies their attacks against uh, dissent without requiring that they put up with the same from their opposition. And Satan likes it because it enables his forces to basically Trojan horse depraved content into a formally polite and, and relatively moral society. So the next one, beliefs should conform to the best scientific understanding that one has of the world. One should take care to never distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. This is a great one because they control academia. So anything that is in alignment with their narrative is what the science says. It's the expert consensus or whatever. But also when challenging things that have been acknowledged as true for generations, then they employ this idea of relative truth. Well, that's your truth. What about my truth? And that's the cycle. Promote relativism, wait for the truth to become vulnerable, take power, and then declare your ideology to be the truth and then silence anything that challenges it under the guise of misinformation or conspiracy theories. Once again, it's a Trojan horse because you get the masses to accept that science is the arbiter of truth. Then you simply get science to define what was formerly known to be bad is natural and good and healthy, actually. And the left likes this because it justifies their control over the narratives and the flow of information. And Satan likes it because it rationalizes bad to such an extent that the masses are convinced that it's good, actually. But the next one is, People are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that might have been caused. Remember, like they said, these rules only apply to you. They're not talking about damage to communities during riots for social justice. That's all justified. It's more like, uh, you misgendered your niece and you have to apologize for it, but it's okay. Hey, no one's perfect. And it's like, yeah, but not because we're not buying into gender theory. It's the same thing. Eternal tolerance for me, but not for thee, because our ideas actually challenge the established order. So the left likes this because it justifies their self-perceived moral authority over the dissenting voices in society, which are me and you and your racist uncle. Happy Thanksgiving, big guy. Give him hell. Don't let him break you. But of course, Satan likes this too, because it's the same idea of this vague appeal to a moral framework that will actually be used to usher in widespread immorality and sin. So yeah, here's the last one. Every tenant is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should prevail always over the written or spoken word, which of course means compassion only for those in agreement with the narratives, wisdom as defined by the information used to compose the narratives, and justice as defined by the purported purposes of the narratives. It really is also tiresome. And it's also an attack on Christianity as a whole, as implied by written or spoken word being second to compassion as defined by tolerance and absolvement from responsibility, wisdom as defined by subsidized knowledge, which seeks to undermine traditional morality, and justice as defined by what is subjectively right being executed, which is of course the, tri uh, the triumph of immorality. Remember the beginning, the Paul Harvey monologue, If I Were the Devil? There is a reason that everything satanic in society is being promoted by the left, either directly or by proxy. Lust, gluttony, hedonism, envy, wrath, it's all there. And we just illustrated the philosophical overlap as to why this is the case. So now I want to talk about two examples that illustrate this especially well. And those are drag queens and abortion. For drag queens and everyone's favorite drag queen story hour, uh, let's start by defining it. So basically drag or drag queens, it's where men dress up like women, usually for purposes of entertainment, but you can do a lot of things for entertainment. The reason that they settle with this is because it's basically like a gay fetish and they don't really deny this either, but it's worth mentioning here because drag is also more or less a satanic ritual. And what I mean by this is that, first of all, you can just look at them, try to tell me that they look normal and healthy. But what drag is, is basically this like performative caricature of what it means to be a woman, which is significantly more offensive, by the way, than blackface. But no one will talk about this. Like when someone does blackface, it's like, haha, my skin dark. Now I I'm a black person. Okay, but when someone does drag, they are essentially taking what it means to be a woman and reducing it to like this gay performative fetish defined by a caricature. And this is bad because believe it or not, being a woman is a more significant identity than just being black because women can create life. But these people seek to totally invert reality. Like there is a reason that they 
as gay men want to parade around in women's clothing and makeup because they are mocking the natural order of human sexuality and existence. They are essentially taking womanhood and mocking it for their sexual fetishes. No, it's for entertainment. No one who's not a pervert would find this entertaining, dummy. There's a reason that drag is celebrated and promoted to children, but blackface is literally the worst thing that someone can do. I'll give you an example. The most famous drag queen is a character who goes by the name RuPaul. This person has had TV shows. He's been in the international spotlight for a while now. And after President President Trump beat Hillary Clinton in 2016. This guy said, the America that we've all fought so hard for, the narrative of love and peace and liberty and equality, it feels like it's dead, spoken like a true liberal, right? He's also admitted that drag is a very, very political act because it, quote, challenges the status quo by rejecting fixed identities. And he said that drag says, I'm a shapeshifter. I do whatever the hell I want at any given time, which echoes everything that we've been talking about with liberalism and Satanism, that these people are rejecting the boundaries of reality in favor of their own subjective desire and identities, but it's not enough that they do it. Society must accept them. Your children must learn about it. And it really isn't rocket science. It actually is pretty simple. It's just that they like literally want your kids. That's what it's always been. Different degrees of child sacrifice. And everybody knows that children are the easiest to deceive. And when a child is shown these things, they're all dressed up with flashy colors and rainbows and fun music. They're dancing. They're viewing a lifestyle that is devoid of God, but it's painted in fun and these nice ideas of love and tolerance or whatever. It's teaching children not to accept God, but to view themselves as gods. To love and accept yourself means to reject the idea that you are flawed, which is to reject God's truth. This is why we are reminded in incessantly that we must lift up gay voices because they desire to be worshipped as how they see themselves, gods. I am who I say I am, not who God says. I do what I want to do, not what God wants for me. And I love and accept myself, which is to say that I worship myself. There is a reason that these things are installed into the mainstream. No one was ever sitting at home and thought, you know what? We need more shows about drag queens. No, there is a reason that these things are targeting children with your tax dollars. And there's a reason that they are literally dressing up like demons when they do it. There are demons which are androgynous. They're hybrid. They're a male with breasts and the head of a goat. And the American man is just too busy being distracted by the NFL to do anything about this. Why would he? He hasn't done anything about abortion either, which is significantly worse and which has been a part of the mainstream conversation for a significantly longer period of time. It has reached the part of the monologue, ladies and gentlemen, where we discuss abortion, which is not coincidentally both the greatest achievement in the history of liberalism and the greatest achievement for the devil in the history of American society, which is of course why the satanic temple was allied with the leftist organizations in pushing back against the Texas anti-abortion laws, which were what inspired this video in the first place a few months ago. So. The notes here basically say that abortion is evil, true. Uh, abortion is a satanic ritual, child sacrifice, true. Not only is it killing children, but it's having the mother do it herself. It's having the mother sacrifice the child at the altar of self-worship or of material gains by enabling her easier access to a career or whatever. And of course, Satan is very deceptive. His, his rhetoric, his strategies, all very appealing. It's like we mentioned earlier. It's about justice and rights and freedom. But in actuality, when you cut through all the noise, when you cut through all the women's rights, my body, my choice, the pink hats, the Amy Schumers, what you'll find are the corpses of 50 million dead children. Think about that, 50 million dead children. Your son or daughter, dead but virtually millions of times over, 50 million dead children. Where's their pile of shoes? It's the ultimate achievement of liberalism and Satanism. There's no issue, not gay rights, not even racial equality, that will get these people to take the streets and, and melt down like their ability to legally murder children. You can be a liberal and be pro-gun, be pro-market, a host of other things, they'll basically leave you alone. But you cannot be a liberal and not support abortion. They will attack you like a school of piranhas. And just like you cannot be a liberal and not support abortion, because it's the defining issue of their philosophy, you cannot be a moral person and support abortion. Your morality is not compartmentalized. It's not like you can be a good person here, but then over here, not so much. It's all connected. It is all part of the same soul. It's a part of who you are. And if you don't draw the line at the murder of unborn children, I can only assume that any other line you draw is fake and arbitrary and weak. And the reason that abortion is the defining issue of liberalism, why it's the crown jewel of the whole philosophy, is that it has liberated the individual from the greatest and most obvious constraint that could exist, which is the obligation to another life which they've created. To achieve such a degree of freedom and autonomy that you could have sex, create a life, and then kill that life is the ultimate form of liberalism. There will be more variations and new variations, I'm sure, but nothing will ever surpass that, at least until like transhumanism really takes root.
but I don't know. It's playing God. Liberalism, taken to its logical conclusion, is the rejection of God. It puts man above all else. And if man is God, then the value of human life is determined by those around it. This is why mothers murder their children. It's why communists have killed tens of millions of people, particularly Christians in Soviet Russia. And it's why they want to kill even more Christians now. Wait a minute. You're telling me after explaining the undismissible overlap between Satanism and liberalism, that one of the first things the communists did when taking over an Orthodox Christian country in the 1900s is to start slaughtering Christians like cattle? Yeah, yeah, that would add up, wouldn't it? But you didn't learn that in the textbooks because they were written by communists. This gets back to one of the points that we talked about uh, recently, which is that the struggle against communism was not about and is not about economics. It's about the soul of the nation. The communists were and are godless, and we recognize that. People were not starving to death and being executed just because uh, they just they couldn't get the math right for making sure everyone had enough grain. No, it was largely because they wanted to slaughter them, because they hated them. Never forget that. It's not an economic argument. It is a moral argument and a theological argument. I don't hate communism because it means I can't get products as easily. And they, they couldn't quite get the math right. I hate it because it wants to kill me for pledging allegiance to God instead of man or to the state. Oh, well, how do we change their minds? We can't. Don't you understand that? You will never debate these people into halting their pursuit of evil and then joining your side with the same passion. It's just not possible. And this, of course, gets into the Chad hominem, because at a certain point, you just have to set facts aside and ask, what happened to you that made you like this? Why are you willing to defend abortion and ignore the facts so passionately? Are you possessed by a demon? It's, it's not even logical, let alone moral. I have a right to an abortion because I want one. I want abortion because it's what I want. It's a tautology. It's circular reasoning. It's not actually saying anything. And they can't say anything because if they just admitted that they wanted to kill children, that wouldn't be so good for PR. And according to the Bible, there's usually like four things that become widespread in a society before God goes ahead and deletes it. Um, and those are sexual immorality, child sacrifice, homosexuality, and bestiality. We currently check three boxes and the furries are going to be reaching for the Sharpie pretty soon. And frankly, we deserve whatever happens next. What is the left promoting in society? They control the culture and the power. And what has been the result? We have taken everything that is good and righteous and pure and beautiful, and we have mocked it. And we have instead elevated everything that is evil and disgusting to the core of our society. Our culture has become an abomination, abortion, materialism, greed, hedonism, gluttony, lust, convenience, endless entertainment. All of that has distracted us from the most important truth. God will not be mocked. And you can roll your eyes. You can keep your pride. Keep recycling to yourself the same tire George Carlin monologues. Ha, I pray to Joe Pesci. Guess where that got me? Or your little excerpts from your Richard Dawkins book, which you only read half of. None of that will matter because you will bow and you will confess just like everybody else. And you will be humbled to learn that a life dedicated to the pursuit of the self does not make you more than the dust at his feet. Where did we start to go wrong? Maybe not exactly here with abortion. Feminism probably is the problem, actually. You know, I amend that. No, with society, feminism is the problem, not just here. There's a reason that Milo used to say that feminism is cancer. It doesn't stop. Feminism is just a form of Satanism when you think about it because it promotes the idea that the sexes are equal when they're not. They were never intended to be. Feminism is unnatural. It's the complete inversion of reality. And in order to achieve something close to an equal outcome, women now have to be elevated above men in society, which is satanic and unnatural. Women above men is chaotic and wrong. Men are leaders. Granted, I can't say I blame women because men have become so weak. So really, this is more of an indictment of men than it is women. But the point still stands. Feminism led to abortion, which strips away woman uh, from the defining feature of her womanhood. It celebrates this as though it is a victory. They wear it like it's some kind of prize. What feminism promotes as the child of liberalism is the rejection of children, the rejection of nature, the rejection of God. No, I will not serve. Non-servium, exactly as Lucifer said to God, I will not serve. Well, the thing is, it's not actually your body and it's not actually your choice. This gets into some kind of like metaphysical questions, but it's like, how is it your body? Because you're in possession of it? Because you control it? Yeah, possession's nine-tenths of the law or whatever, but just because you have something doesn't make it yours. You didn't make it. You didn't design it. You didn't even want it. That you are blessed with it is is like incidental at worst, God's will at best. It's not your choice, it's God's choice, and you are not God. It's about rejecting the order of things. There's a reason that demons are androgynous. There's a reason that abortion sacrifices both masculinity and femininity. Women do not bear and nurture their children. They kill them. Men do not protect their children. They kill them. They just allow it to happen. Well, I just wasn't ready to be a mom. You're still a mom. Now you're just the mother of a dead child, which if I'm correct, makes you a terrible mother. Actually, the worst mother. You are now in the worst category of mothers. Congratulations. I hope your social science degree that cost $150,000 but brings you $35,000 a year was worth it. 
You're not your social science degree. Abortion seeks to make us gods, but we're not gods. So instead, it drives us away from gods, which makes us nothing. And when we are nothing, we are meaningless, we are in despair. And of course, abortion is the single most important sacrament of feminism, as it ensures that there can never be consequences for sexual decisions. It is the complete inversion of reality. It is the ultimate pillar of liberalism and Satanism, because it has led to the normalization of widespread child sacrifice in this country. And as we've talked about extensively now, liberalism properly understood is the political arm of Satan. Any society that embraces liberalism will decay into evil and despair. It is inevitable. If you don't understand why, watch again. You cannot reject God and you cannot pretend that good and evil are just different points of view, because if you do that, your society is going to reflect that. And I think I've shown that this is more or less where we are now. So I'm going to tell you to watch the 2010s video again, because I think it goes into this well in a way that we didn't quite do here, but we're going to do a follow-up video to this examining the links between Christianity and conservatism, uh, which will be out after Thanksgiving, I think. So thank you for watching all the way through. Um, and in the meantime, remember that the only way out of this is to accept Christ. Everything else will just be trying to slow down the spread of evil. The only way to actually fight is to fight on behalf of good, which means that you have to accept Christ. Read your Bible, go to church, pray, and we will all make it out of this, if not here in the end. So Thanks again for watching. Thank you for being patient with me. Happy Thanksgiving to the wonderful HOC audience. And now that we're done with this, we can move on to the new content. This was a big project, but we should have smooth sailing from here, relatively speaking. So you'll see the disloyal R's will pay. And the left fears this. It's true. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so that you are uh, notified in the event that I post. This is me ringing the post notification bell so that you are notified in the event uh, that I post, which I will be doing so much more often. You'll see the disloyal R's will be on suicide watch. The plan not trusters will be on suicide watch. It was all part of the plan. I had to root out who I could trust and who I couldn't. So I cast a pretty wide net. I took a little bit of a break. I wanted to see how many would turn on me. Now we know who they are. We've got their names. We will remember. They'll see. They'll see. Um, what's that other thing? Share the video with a friend. So important. So crucial to the process, which we trust. In God, we trust. And then second to that is in process, we trust. So thank you so much for watching again. Happy Thanksgiving. Thankful for you guys. Hopefully uh, your racist uncle does all right. Sparring with your liberal arts degree cousin at the table. We'll see how it goes. Let me know. If it's a particularly funny story, send me an email. We love those. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Boom.